welcome uh, to you all to today's talk. Uh, it's a part of uh, the Q time learning a series of talks that I'm giving. Today's talk is the third talk in the series of six talks. The first talk was on uh, the introduction to Q time learning. The second talk was on the learning in trust dimension and today's talk the third talk is going to be learning in innovation dimension. So, before before we start the today's talk on learning in innovation dimension, I would like to recap uh, for, the, for the benefit of those who are seeing this talk for the first time uh, a brief uh, introduction to Q time learning. Q time learning is away from the implicit linearity that exists today. You enter at uh, kindergarten and exist, uh, ex exit at uh, some getting some degree. So, we are going away from that. The Q time learning is going to be a paradigm shift from that. Similarly, it is going to be away from the model of era which was uh, in 1940s industrial era we call it. So, we are in 21st century. So, we need a different era, we are a different era, we need a different kind of learning. So, the third paradigm shift is learning aspects are continuous and cyclical and there is no starting point. So, this is a brief introduction to Q time learning and the other aspects of Q time learning that we have learned so far, it gives a completeness in learning. It gives a 360 degree view of learning. It looks as knowledge as one and it looks knowledge and skill as two sides of the coin. It, it promotes a knowledge which is bound, a knowledge which is unbound, which is beyond that what you know that you can acquire. So, there is a paradigm shift in learning from those aspects. We also went into understanding of how this bounded knowledge expands and shrinks over time as time changes. So, we have a new learning coming in, we have to forget the old learning. So, some old learning shrinks and the new learning expands and the most important paradigm shift in Q time learning is learning in different dimensions, learning with quadrants and taking Q time steps in Q time dimensions. So, these are the three important aspects of Q time learning. So, we have with that it promotes a one class for the entire human race. There is no division of educated and uneducated masses. With this learning, everyone is educated to some respect. So, Q time learning promotes a one class for one human race and it is scalable. It can be learned at a very lowest level of a person, individual, or it can be learned at the highest level of a nation. So, the learning Q time way, so quadrants concepts is that the Q time con consists of four quadrants and they, those four, four quadrants are dimensions themselves in learning. So, we talked about in the second talk, so how we can learn in trust dimension. So, the second talk going to be how we are going to learn or what we are going to learn in the innovation dimension. So, other two talks will be on the method dimension and effort dimension. So, these dimensions themselves expand and shrink as the knowledge where is accumulated over a period of time and unlearned over a period of time. So, we have the concept of a uh, learning in four dimensions, but how do we learn? How do we learn in those four, dim four dimensions? What steps do you take? So, Q time learning advocates Q time steps. So, what are they? They are very simple steps to remember. Acquire, begin, connect and discover. So, those are the four steps you must take. No start, you do not have to start any, you can start discover, acquire, begin, connect. 
or you can connect, discover, acquire, begin. It does not matter how you take the steps, but it has to be cyclical, there is no starting point. So, this is the important concept in QTime learning. So, you take these four steps in all the four dimensions to complete learning in QTime or the QTime way. So, the QTime also advocates when it has got four dimensions, there are two dimensions which are driving the other two dimensions. The first two dimensions which are driving the other two dimensions are trust and innovation. So, I talked about trust in the second talk. In now, in today's talk, I am going to talk about innovation dimension, learning in an innovation dimension. The future talks will be on the effort and methods. So, we have the trust and innovation dimensions driving the effort and method dimensions. What, do, what does it mean? The learning when it happens in trust and innovation dimension drives the learning in effort and method dimension. So, what is the core value of each dimension? The core value of uh, each dimension that we talked about trust is a sway dimension. Higher the trust, you sway more towards that. Lower the trust, you sway away from that. So, what is the tenet of the innovation dimension? Innovation dimension is nothing but launches new products and services every day. That is its tenet, that is the core understanding of innovation dimension is launching, launching something new. That is the tenet of innovation dimension. So, the, in general when we talk about a Q time education, we talk about learning quadrants, learning in multiple dimensions and what are the learning steps, what dimension drives what dimension, what are the main core values of each dimension and how these dimensions influence learning. So, there is all together constitutes what I call Q time education. So, the influence of innovation dimension in 21st century is launching new products and new services. We see it happening every day. Why? Why, why is it we see so many products and services almost every day? There are many reasons that we can give, but the most important reason we are globally connected. So, what? When you are globally connected, the ideas flow from every corner to every other corner. Then what happens? If some good idea propagates over the global connection that we have, it takes root at some other place where it is very much con congruent to the growth. See like you know a tree or a plant or whatever types of thing you see grows very well under certain conditions. So, how do they grow? The, the seeds are propagated by air or by other uh, like flies. So, these are the ones which propagate the seeds around and then the growth happens. So, the same in the same way ideas are propagated through this global connection what we have internet and they are taking root wherever that particular rooting helps that to grow. It does not matter the idea can originate is somewhere in India, can take place in Australia, something can originate in Australia, but can take place in India. So, there is no set rules where the innovation can happen. So, the learning has to in the innovation dimension has to know this. So, the innovation does not mean I have an idea here, so it has to take root here, so it can happen anywhere, see. So, many many things have happened, why? You, you have US earlier known to uh, come up with lot of products, over a period of time Japan took over that, over a period of time other countries came up, everyone is innovating, why? All the knowledge that is available is being shared. Once it is being shared, it is gets collaborated. Once it is collaborated, it is a nature, 
its color, its shape, everything changes. And if that environment is ideal for that to take root and grow, there happens innovation. So the 21st century, the learning dimension is innovation. So it is happening everywhere. So how is it growing compared to others? It is big. It's bigger than you can imagine. All the learning in dimension, other dimensions like trust, the method dimension, effort dimensions, the learning happening in innovation dimension is changing almost every day. Believe me, it is because of the connected world. It is because of the speed with which you can connect. It is because of the maturity of the ideas by the nature of the current environment where we can collaborate. I can talk to a surgeon, I can talk to a surgeon okay, over in UK somewhere and find out what options I may have for a surgery that can take place in India. Some of the surgeries are happening remotely too. So that is not only innovation. It is the expansion of innovation. So, what is Q time learning in innovation dimension? So, how do we learn? What do we learn? But remember, Q time learning is based on learning quadrants. So, the innovation dimension will also have learning quadrants. So, what are they? The innovation dimension is based on a mindset. This is a beautiful thing. I will read this story for you. There is no devotion that equals the devotion to truth. So, many a times the knowledge that you accumulate is of the highest quality when you pursue the truth. Believe me, the knowledge is going to be the highest quality when you pursue the truth. There is no happiness that equals the happiness derived from sacrifice. So the many instances of many stories, many things we hear, we call it heroism. So what is behind the heroism? The sacrifice a person or an entity has made. So, the, 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 the happiness that you derive out of that is of immense magnitude and there are no better eyes that equal the eyes that education provides. This is one of the Subhashitas that it is one of those uh, the wisdom that has been derived over a period of time and is put into Sanskrit shlokas because Subhashitas. So, this I, these eyes that are better than any eyes is the education, the eyes the education provide. Why? When li, only when you see with those eyes that education provides, the learning will blossom. When the learning blossoms, the clarity happens. When the clarity happens, the visibility increases. What you can see now of a distance of a couple of meters will increase to a couple of kilometers. You can see the distance. So once you see the more distance in ahead of you, you will be able to see more doors of opportunity. So the doors to innovation becomes visible and then innovation happens. Why? You are seeing that door much ahead, much before than anyone else can see, right? Because you can see that door, because of the knowledge you have acquired, because of all the other things you have put into place, you are able to see those doors of opportunity much before the others can see because the others are only seeing only few meters ahead of them. Now you are seeing few kilometers ahead of you. So those are the doors of opportunity that you can grab. When that, that happens, when you produce certain things, the product service, other people tell, oh, innovation has happened. So, 
the first learning quadrant of innovation is unlearning. Why, why do I say that? Why, why should somebody should unlearn what they have learned before? Or oh, you may ask me, is it not a waste of time? I have, I have spent so much time, I have spent my years of time learning this and you are telling me to, to get this innovation mindset, I have to unlearn that? No, I am not saying that. What I am saying is that question, you were learning whether it is relevant to the current. You might have learned something few years back because of your circumstances, because where you are brought up or because where you have learnt what you have learnt and maybe the teachers, the institutions, the schools can only teach you so much, not beyond what they were capable of. So you have learned that and you think that learning is sufficient for you to deal with situations of today. But if they are not, if they are not sufficient, if they are have shortcomings, then there is something has to happen. What has to happen? You have to take that bold step to unlearn that. So once you take that bold step to unlearn that, what happens? Then you make room for new learning. So is understand this, the chief object of education is not to learn things but to unlearn things. So education that provides the, those eyes also should provide a method or a mechanism for you to unlearn things. So question comes you know what can be and what should be unlearned. I told you if they are not relevant today they should be unlearned because you are carrying a dead wood. So what, what do I mean by dead wood? You are carrying something on your back, in your backpack that you do not need or that you cannot use. So you are carrying more weight on your back, what happens? Your steps slow down. So when you slow down your steps, other go front. So when you are left behind, it becomes much difficult for you to catch up. So what should you do? Unload. So unload that you do not need, that is unlearning. So that is the process of unlearning can happen in many ways. A new learning can happen, like a new water coming in and washing away the old water or stagnant water, so the old water is gone, it can happen. A new learning happens, you have old water going away. So you have an unlearning process taking place. Other process is also forgetting. This is called intentional forgetting. Why? Some of, some of the things that you do over a period of time or whatever you say over a period of time, it becomes a habit. So you have to realize that those habits are not paying or giving any dividends in today's world. So those habits must go leave. So when you have to really get away from those habits, you have to forget those habits forcefully. So unlearning is also important as forgetting things that, forgetting something you know many normally happens to give excuses. But here it is the intentional unlearning happens. So when that happens, you make room for more learning. So when you make room for more learning, you are really making a progress. So the very first step that our very first thing that you need to recognize before you can think of innovation or having innovation mindset or thinking I am going to innovate is what you can unlearn, right? So the, this is one good saying, you know the second half of the man's life is made up of nothing but the habits he has acquired during the first half. So it, it basically says 
habits are difficult to unlearn right difficult to unlearn the way you move your hands the way you scratch your things and when thinking oh is habit some people look up do you know something about this they say uh, they roll their eyes up it's a habit there is also another habit many a times you know like when i was overseas earlier days i used to do anything s means like this nodding they, they, they didn't understand what is that so i had to come out of that habit of nodding the head sideways to say yes to say yes like this right so that is now a habit so the habit which is part or education is the out of a culture that I was in was different from the culture i moved to so the habits are difficult to unlearn but they can be unlearned at the same time you know the many many times it says that you know uh, precaution is better than medicine right why do they say that so take precautionary measures to stop a you know sickness happening instead of you know being falling sick and then taking medicines and then you know wasting you a couple of days uh, in the bed so the same way goes in learning be careful on what you acquire so before you acquire take a precautionary step is it worth acquiring or not so while you acquire something look ahead look ahead what kind of life you want to lead and is this acquisition which is happening today is it going to help me there so you have to think in terms of in 10 years 20 years time what you want to be and then see whether that learning which is happening today is going to help that living that you want to have some 20 years later so look ahead but at any point in time you have to remember the q time learning is based on a cyclical process make the cyclical process why every cyclical process makes that one either expands or shrinks make that learning to expand or make that learning to shrink a positive cyclical process it expands a negative cyclical process shrinks so it is important that the cyclical process in anything you do is rooted in your learning so okay well i have unlearned i have cleared up everything because i have acquired junk all the time my my brain is clear my head is clear there is nothing else there is absolutely empty what should i do the question comes now is learn or re learn so there might be some element of learning that is there left but then relearn so relearning is part of the innovation mindset why because once you have a capability or a capacity or a method to relearn on a continuous basis you will be always ahead of the group why it is part of your relearning process why so sir mr charles said personally i am ready to learn although i do not always like being taught the interesting thing is no what, what just don't don't go by that don't go by that okay that you don't need to learn something uh, you know and but not not being taught but look at the relearning is a motivational aspect of it it's a motivation that propels okay from within i want to learn something it has it has to be there it has to come from within so here he says i'm ready to learn which means it is coming from within but what is going to be learned or who is going to teach me what i should learn is immaterial but see relearning is always a difficult process the reason for that is very simple because when you are relearning there always a tendency to fall back into the old habits of learning so relearning means not learning something new relearning means learning in new ways 
learning by adopting new methods, learning in new environment, learning in new direction. So, these are the part of learning. So, relearning is nothing but in a, whatever you have learned something you want to relearn it, it is not the case. There are a lot of things attached to it. So, it is a difficult process, but what happens? You will become current, you will live in the present, that is much more important than living in the past. Living in the past is not going to help you. So, with the relearning process as a habit, you are going to be current. What does it mean? When you are going to be current, you are going to be of some value to someone. You are no more a dead wood. Why? Because you have that mindset to contribute something for today and you can see tomorrow. Why? You have, have a process of unlearning, you have a process of relearning. You are making room for something new while you are moving things that you do not need. It is like you are cleaning up your house. So, it becomes make you current. And then what happens? Does not matter whether over a period of time you grow. You grow, of course, you grow older, you have learned a lot of things, you have your younger generation coming in. But since you are current and you in pace, in step with them, what we call a generation gap, maybe this big has reduced to this much. So, you will be able to respond, resonate better with the younger generation with the upcoming generation, their thinking is going to be congruent with what you are thinking. So, it is important that that gap is reduced to make sure the progress is not hindered by the old way of thinking. And then, if what is being taught or it is not what you seek, but seek what you like to teach. That way, a relearning happens to you automatically. All right? So, the important tenets, important aspects of innovation comes only when unlearning happens and relearning begins. There is another saying which is, uh, I am defeated and I know it and if I meet any human being from whom I find myself unable to learn anything. See, this is a, one of those uh, uh, very positive minded person. He believes, he believes he can learn from anyone. So, he, what does it mean? It means he sees teacher in everyone. So, what happens then? So, if you start seeing everyone as a teacher, so you can seek the teacher who can teach you much better and much more quickly than before. And also, you can seek the students who can be taught, because it is important for you to know the learning is universal, so is the knowledge. So, the knowledge is universal and the learning is universal. Why, why do I say that? See, it is important to know that uh, one of the Subhashitas, again, I, I, I fall back to one of those, uh, the time uh, tested, proven sayings of our um, old sages which says, uh, knowledge is Brahma. Brahma in the real sense means it is a creation. So, a knowledge which is acting, as a creation is Brahma. So, the knowledge has to create and then what happens from knowledge comes cohesivity. Cohesivity was bonding, getting attracted to the which is like minded. So, you start discovering that. It goes on to say the whole world is the incarnation of knowledge. Hence, there is nothing but knowledge around you. So, when you see the knowledge around you, you would see then that it is the teacher is in everyone. 
So, when you see starting te seeing teacher in every one, then you will be able to seek the teacher that can teach you. So, when you believe in that, knowledge is one, knowledge is everywhere. So, we can find the knowledge coming from anyone because that person becomes a teacher for you. So, this process of acquiring knowledge can happen only if the real learning mindset is created. So, then what happens? Rebranding. What, what do I mean by rebranding? See, when you, when you look at uh, branding as such, what is the main idea of branding? Main idea of branding is to create a reputation of some kind, a reputation for a service, a reputation for a product, right? So, branding activity is to really create in the minds of those people looking at the products that you have created or the services that you are offering as the highest quality and of they can trust to the highest level. So, once you have a highest level of trust and then deliver to that highest level of trust, you have built a reputation. So, once you have built a reputation, you have been branded as the best company or the best person or the best dental surgeon, whosoever it is, or best hospitals, best healthcare center, because you have built the reputation and you have created a brand. People trust the brand that you create. If you put a brand name on a particular product, they trust it because they know that you have created a product that is worth using as of today. But today changes, right? So, today is not exactly same as yesterday because why? Innovation is happening everywhere. So, the skills are getting transformed to tools, the tools are getting transformed to skills again and there are new products and new services happening because of that. So, why then we keep quiet? We rebrand. We rebrand the services and products in such a way that it adds value to the current market. So, automatically then what happens? The innovation happens. It has to happen because the rebranding requires to meet, respond to the people need of today and expect the things to change tomorrow. So, rebranding activity is the comes from the aim of education is the knowledge not of facts, it is important, but of values. See, because re, the rebranding happens at every level, it is an individual level, I can rebrand myself today as a surgeon, tomorrow or someone else. The people have uh, multiple roles they play. A person, in, I have, uh, I read an article in uh, one of those um, a paper person is a, um, a chef in the, uh, you know, during the week and the weekends he is a football player. So, the individual levels he is creating, re, re, he is rebranding his own self in different aspects. Same thing happens organization when it responds to the needs of uh, those people it serves, it rebrands. Uh, long, long time back, uh, Coca Cola was coming only in what um, glass bottles. Nowadays, you get them in cans because it's much easier to dispense in uh, dispense in through the wind vending machines. It is better for them, long lasting thing. You know, it won't break, so the uh, the drink can last longer. The damages are less. So even the Coke is exactly the same, but it's rebranded through a different presentation. So a rebranding is a necessary evil because even though you would like to stop, take a breather and keep quiet, the world is not doing it. Trust me on that. So, you cannot escape or you cannot in ignore rebranding activity because that's a, that is another important learning aspect to promote innovation. 
See, the fact remains facts. The facts cannot change. But what changes is the branding aspect of it. So, the rebranding is changing the perception of the fact. You can shine a different color light and make it look different. So, what you are doing is the same fact, same thing being offered either in a different package or along with other things to add value or make it current. So, rebranding is changing the perception of the facts. So, that is an essential uh, evil that you cannot escape. So, when we are learned about unlearn, relearning and rebranding are the aspects of this uh, learning for innovation to happen. What is the fourth learning quadrant that we need to focus on or learn from? I say resourcing. Why do I say that? The constantly when the skills are being transformed to tools and the people who learn those tools are now have a different skills. And then they are able to save you more time in doing the same task, which was done for taking more before. The task which is taking several days now takes only few hours. I will give you an example. I mean you would know that. Long time back, there is no connectivity of any kind uh, to make overseas calls or it is prohibitively expensive to make that. So, what did we have apart from letter being reaching um, from a destination to another one from a, so you have a postal mail going across. Then have you heard of telegrams? I think it is no one, no one has heard that anymore. So, telegrams were reaching much faster than those uh, postal mails, you know like couple of hours, you know why? Even though the telegrams are going over the ne uh, network, you have to still walk into a post office, give the message and the message is typed in to go to the other destination post office over a, in a service uh, wired wire, wire service and a person from that post office has to go and deliver the message. So, even though it saved time from days to hours, so we came up with a new resource, phones, it's immediately you can connect. But at the time, at that point, earlier days before instant connection that we used to have, we used to have operators. So, they have to put you on a hold, okay, I will connect you now. So, uh, constantly the sourcing is changing. So, there is a need to resource. So, if you do not resource on a constant basis, innovation dies. See, the great end of education is to discipline rather than to furnish the mind. The mind has to be disciplined and to train to use its own powers than to fill with the others. This is a very important thing to understand. If you have to have innovation, innovation cannot happen by following others. If you fill up your mind with what others know, then you have not trained your own mind to discover its own powers. So, when you want to really come up, oh, you, sometimes you stop and say, he is a very resourceful person. Why do you say that? Because that person has trained his mind to use its own powers, so that he can become resourceful. Right? So, the discipline that is needed it is an important tenet for resourcing skills and so is the training. So, the great end of education, see if you think there is an end of an education, at least it has to end in this aspect, in these two aspects of it. One to discipline your mind, 
and want to train it to its own powers. So when these two things happen, you automatically become resourceful. So the important aspect of your uh, resourcing skill has to come from the discipline and training and the discipline and training both are cyclical nature. This and again a facet of Q time learning and also know this, the if growth has to happen, the growth has to happen, you have to furnish it with the right resources. So, the sourcing of today is going to change tomorrow. One example I give you, earlier days when you have uh, an, a crop, a crop, rice crop, it, some of the variety of rice crops needed a lot of water. But then came the hybrid rice, what happened there? It consumed less water but more gave more tonnage per acre. So, the growth has happened, why? Because of innovation. Let us not, let's not go into the fact whether that hybrid rice is good for you or not, but the concept of imagining how can we double the production of rice within the given uh, dimensions of the land that we have and given the supply of water limited or reducing over time, how do we either maintain or double the production, that is innovation. So, innovation need not happen only in terms of uh, productions or services, it can happen anywhere. It is also the root cause of the growth and it happens because you are constantly resourcing your mind with new things. So, when you constantly resource your mind, it helps to unlearn, it helps to relearn, it helps you to rebrand and these activities become a second nature to you. So, when that happens, it emanates into other aspects of what you do, or other things what people can see you, you doing and they say, oh my God, he is a very innovative person. So, to really earn that credit, what have you done? You have went through this learning process. You have went through the process of unlearning that you do not want, relearning what is needed and relevant today and rebranding constantly to make sure that the services and products are perceived as of today and then you have resourced your mind with of relevant. So, these four things we have to really understand uh, some of the uh, time saving uh, aspects of innovation. Earlier days you know you have to uh, we used to have to like, go up and get up and then change channels on TV right. I do not know how many of probably you should ask your dad's mom they would know that. Now it is all remote. So, yes when we say, we, when we must open the doors of opportunity, but we must also equip our people to walk through those doors. When we tell you can do it, but well you can do it how? You can do it with tools. So, we have to create tools for them to walk through those doors, because with those tools, they are going to get, save time for us. When they save, when they save that time, save that important time which is being lost for unwanted stuff, the time gets invested in something that you can create, innovate for future. So, sometimes you have to be very, th very, very, have to be very careful about this, you know some of the things happen suddenly for you or from nowhere, it kind of strikes as a lightning striking to you. You wake up and realize oh my god, what, ha what I have been doing this is wrong. I have to do something different from today. So, some of the resourcing needs can be sudden from nowhere and you wake up and say okay look I have to do something differently. So, you start searching for uh, proper resources and tools, but it is important always 
uh, these things may have uh, happened suddenly, but you might have wasted a lot of time prior to that. So the best thing to do is to plan ahead, to plan ahead to resource and plan ahead to grow. You see, earlier days we were talking about fertilizers growing things and fertilizers of different nature come into picture. They are targeted fertilizers. One fertilizer which can grow a certain crop uh, double its quantity, the same fertilizer used some other crop will not work. So, with growth, okay, the growth always has to come from the minds that see things with clarity, otherwise growth will not happen. Have you ever seen a farmer going in the field and taking out all the small unwanted things out of uh, the land, the cultivated land? so that the rice can grow or the wheat can grow. So all the rest of it is useless. So that is taken out or plugged out to give clarity for how much can be grown in that land. So the resourcing premise is based on that whenever we create a doors of opportunity or doors to open for innovation, we should also be ready, ready to equip ourselves with that. So, with that concept of unlearning, relearning, rebranding and resourcing, all the together going through the process cyclical with no starting point, you achieve innovation proficiency. This is an important aspect of learning. So, learning in quadrants, learning in dimensions learning cyclically, learning with few time steps all come together to achieve innovation proficiency. See this innovation proficiency is uh, like a steps like you have to go through the steps of unlearning, relearning, rebranding and resourcing as I said before to reach that uh, pinnacle. So innovation proficiency combined with the established uh, trust pro, trusted professionalism they are the highest peaks that you can reach. <coughs> so the peak for trust is the trusted professionalism, the peak for innovation is innovation proficiency. So when you reach those peaks, you are at the highest level of knowledge seeing what can be done in other two dimensions, which I said methods and efforts. So when I say innovation proficiency, many people like you know they say what what, what we call proficiency. So as I said, okay, this uh, uh, proficiency and professionalism, they are important to really create efficiency and maturity. But where do you create efficiency? In efforts dimension, and where do you create maturity? In method dimension. So the professionalism and the proficiency drive the efficiency and the maturity. So really what is uh, innovation proficiency? If you give a little um, thought to it, a little uh, thinking or ponder over that, you I can say or uh, you can also feel that you can say that innovation happens when the utility of the product or the service change, the utility value, the utility value this is a chair right so the chair is there to sit it it doesn't make me move from anywhere to anywhere but if i convert the chair and create a wheelchair which is operated by the power buttons or something like that to move wherever we want it the utility factor of the chair now changes for a handicapped person to move around that's innovation because we know the handicapped person cannot move as quickly or as efficiently as other people. So we create an opportunity for the person to be mobile, that is innovation. And whenever innovation happens or happening, so it brings to the forefront what we call lateral thinking, 
lateral thinking is thinking across. Thinking across in every sense like you think in a wide perspective, wide spectrum. So, you were you expand your thinking. So, when you expand your thinking, you are able to visualize more. So, when you visualize more, you are going to be finding opportunities to innovate and achieving proficiency is achieving boldness to innovate. So, when you are proficient, you have become bold, you are not going to fear anything anymore because you know exactly you have gone through the process that has been taught in the Q time learning to of unlearning, relearning, rebranding and resourcing and you have reached a proficient level and you are going to really innovate with boldness and the boldness is coming from this dimension and you know in Samaveda one of those uh, four Vedas, we have Rug Veda, Samaveda, Ajur Veda, Atharana Veda. So, Veda uh, philosophy it says one of the Veda is Samaveda, it says people of capability inspire us naturally. So, you can become a person capable of innovating. You can become a person who can inspire. So, the inspiration comes from the many facets of your own learning. So, but the inspiration does not come suddenly. It, 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 it kind of is a process knowingly or unknowingly of all the things has been said so far. Sometimes it ha happens naturally. So, you end up in you end up in getting into the uh, mindset of creating this innovation on a daily basis. The ideas come and go, but you will come to know what you can implement, what you can create, what you can deliver, what you can contribute. So, the important aspect of learning in innovation dimension is to achieve the innovation proficiency. Why? The pursuit of life, the pursuit that everyone pursues. People venture innovation in any way, small or big. There are big innovations are happening. The small innovations also important. I mean, if you have not, Japanese are very good at uh, miniaturizing a uh, lot of things, and and they they are they are small in size, but big in ideas. Small in size, big on delivery and performance. Or there are big innovations, like what? Amazing innovation is one of those flying aircrafts. Some of the aircrafts are big, they are not only big, they can travel farther than before. Why? They have found out okay, that each and every time the flight takes off, on each and every time the flight lands, it consumes more energy or more fuel than when it is cruising. So, then what happens? Frequent flag off, frequent landing. Take off landing, you consume more fuel. Why? Because your range, your range is limited to so many thousands of miles. But what if the range can be increased? So, that this frequent landing and take off and landing take off stops. Then you realize the fact okay, that you can reach long distances, yes, the innovation now has happened to really take this deal with the reality of the situation that where you are wasting fuel, but the need to save fuel is in front of you and you innovate, innovate to create a aircraft to fly longer distances, but at the same time you cannot compromise on the number of people you carry because the population is ever growing. So, the need for more people to fly on an everyday basis keep increasing. So, you only have to not only have to take care of a conflicting uh, requirement 
of more people flying and for farther distances. So, you, you have to only recourse thing you have is innovation. The only answer you have is innovation and you start unlearning things, relearning things, some of the rebrands and resourcing will come all together to create that an answer to a conflicting requirement. So, which is happening today, it can happen tomorrow, it is the century, 21st century is the century for innovation. So, the, the launching of 21st century is launching innovation dimension. You have to launch your learning in innovation dimension. So, this is another driving dimension of Q time. So, the trust and the innovation dimensions are going to uh, drive the learning in other two dimensions. So, I am going to talk about other two dimensions, other two lectures or talks later on. And uh, today's uh, the talk on the learning dimension which is innovation is to go with an understanding people venture innovation small or big. Thank you.